Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheep Movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. I just saw this document, um, apparently from the punch, if I'm correct, that shows Abel Damina as um, one of the, uh, should I say, signatories to the CAC account of a very popular church where the pastor is shading him right now. Saying his follower dropped from 1,000 to 250. Let me tell you the truth. John chapter 6. I'm a biblical scholar. I studied scripture in original languages. The day Christ preached the truth, he lost all his disciples down to only 12 from about 72. Go and read uh, John chapter 6. The moment you start to speak the truth, you will lose your friends. I am an example of how many friends I lost. I lost business associates. I lost friends. I was with a friend of mine who was going through issues the other day. I went to greet him. I asked to ask him about, you just left me. What happened? He said, ah, when you were fighting all the pastors, I knew what you were saying. That taste buds was there. I knew what you were saying was the truth, but I could not be seen associating with you. So the first thing you will lose when you start to tell the truth is friends, acquaintances. And followers. The luck I have is I don't have a daddy Jew. I don't have a spiritual father. I do not have anybody that is a spiritual mentor to me except for God and Yahushua Hamashiach the Christ. So I get my feedback directly from the source. I don't buy water, sorry, I don't buy river water from a man sitting beside the river bank. I fetch my own. So, even though for three years I went through all sorts of financial crises and emotional crises, because all who I thought were my friends abandoned me, at the end of the day, I prevailed. The truth will always prevail. And I'm doing much better now than I was doing when I was in the church system. They will try to tell you, listen, Abel Damina, you're my guy and I will tell you this thing for one-on-one. -on -one. They will try to rubbish this truth you are saying. You are not a perfect person, neither am I. But they can rubbish your person. Don't let them rubbish your truth. This is my advice to you, Abel Damina. They can rubbish your person. Do not ever let them rubbish your truth. Because what they do is they rubbish your person and then they connect your person with your truth. So as a consequence for the simple-minded ones, they rubbish your person, they now end up rubbishing your truth. Not many people are intellectual enough to know that when you rubbish someone, it doesn't mean that their truth also will be rubbished. I, for instance, can sift, I can be your enemy, I can never talk to you, but doesn't mean I don't admire your work. Not many people have the intellectual capacity to do this. So keep this at the back of your mind. My message now is to you, Abel Damina. You believe your truth, stick with it. They will rubbish you. They will drag you in the mud. They will bring up, they will laugh at you and say your congregation has reduced. One day, let the congregation reduce. The Bible says it. <laughs> the path to salvation is narrow. <laughs> the bigger the congregation, the harder it is for them to be on that path. Anywhere you see a crowd, just know that the likelihood that they have missed the road is high. The path to salvation is narrow. Two million people cannot fit into that path. Oh. You see, you see Nigeria with the, then, then they are laughing at the and they say, hey, his church fell from 1,000 to 250. Our own has grown to 3 million. Now, 3 million, Mumu, now you pack put now. Eh? Why do you think the free nation will do our service to gather 500 people? They had us because we are telling you the truth. And consistently over the years, I've been proven to be correct. The more you pray, the more Nigeria fails. The more you go to church, the more your society crumbles. Because the time you are supposed to be using to worship God is the time you are supposed to be using to build your business. Mind your business. Focus on the things that profit you. And then at the end of the day, your service to humanity 
becomes a service to God. Because I can never neglect Matthew 25, 31 to 41. Each time you fed your brothers and sisters, each time you took care of them when they were in hospital, each time you uh, clothed them or gave them water to drink, you were feeding Christ. Read Matthew 25, 31 to 41. The service of God on earth is through humanity, not through church, not through pastor, not through prayer. Let me tell you something. You might not know this. There's nowhere in scripture where it says, if you don't pray, you will not make heaven. Show me. I told you, I study scripture in original languages, Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek, Latin. There is nowhere in scripture where it says, if you do not pray, you will not make heaven. There's also nowhere in scripture that says, if you pray, you will make heaven. But scripture is abundantly clear that we'll be judged according to our deeds. Abundantly clear. Luke chapter 10, if you read from verse 25, the um, Good Samaritan story. A priest passed, a Levite passed, but a Samaritan was the one who helped. And at the end of the day, who got the blessing? Who showed mercy? And Christ said, look, go and show mercy. So, the more you pray for success, the less successful you become. Because success does not have prayer in the equation. If it did, Bill Gates would be poor, Elon Musk would be poor. And don't tell me that, eh, do you, are you with them? Do you know whether they pray or not? No, be Mumu, be Elon Musk is irreligious. Bill Gates is 